Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode uh, with one class. Today we're going to be going through some math problems at the high school and preliminary university level. My name is Bassam, I'm an engineering graduate, and today we'll be starting off with the following first question. Okay, so question number one. Um, uh, the question is asking us uh, find the area of the surface and it's giving us the following equation so I'm going to use the junior tutors equation down here to help uh, understand what we're looking at here so 2 over 3 times x to the power of 3 over 2 plus y to the 3 over 2 so we're going to go through what the junior tutor has answered and we'll try to verify if this is correct and then we'll go through the proper process of how to get the correct answer. So for finding the surface area of a equation that has z, x, and y variables, and it gives us limits between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 for y and x, we have to use the following formula. So this formula over here is the general formula for surface area when you're given um, parameters as shown in the question. So um, when you're given some equation, z equals something, and you're given some limits, you use this formula down here. So we start off with this equation, and then we take the partial derivative with respect to x of this equation, and then partial derivative of this equation with respect to y, and then the junior teacher tutor gets these questions, uh, these answers, sorry. And then um, the junior tutor just substitutes these values into the equation, um, you end up with this, and then you have to take um, two integrals. So you're going to do a double integral calculation to find the surface area value. So you can see that um, the first um, uh, limit 0 to 1 and the second limit 0 to 1 from over here, the limits over here. And then these are just substituted in to get 1 plus x plus y. Taking the first integral to get this, and then... Uh, simplifying, substituting the values, and then they end up with this question. So we'll verify this, so we'll go through the similar process. So the junior tutor uses the correct equation for surface area, so we'll write that down over here. So S is equal to the double integral of R square rooted of 1 plus the partial derivative respect to x squared plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y squared and we'll make some space over here and this, this is square rooted and then we have dy and alright so we don't have much space on this side so, dy dx. Okay. So, let's just evaluate the first partial derivative. So, partial derivative with respect to x. So, we can see from this equation over here, um, if we're only looking at wherever the x variable exists here. So, we're looking at x to the 3 over 2. So, And we're going to take the derivative of that. So, usually what you do is... so you have 2 over 3 in the in the front and then you subtract 1 from the exponent and then you take this exponent and multiply it in the front. So we'll multiply 3 over 2 in the front of um, this variable and then we'll have x and then subtract 1 from the top exponent and we'll end up with a half. So we're taking the partial derivative and then since the next um, component doesn't have any x variables this is more of, you can think of it just of as a constant, and you can just kind of say it, it, the derivative of that will just be 0 when we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x. So here we end up with this. The 2 over 3 and 3 over 2 cancel out, and we're just left with x over uh, x to the power of a half. Uh, so this is the correct partial derivative that's obtained. And then we'll do the same thing for the partial derivative with respect to y. So here, similar idea, we're looking for the y uh, variables. So in this, in the first 
um, component, there's no y variable, so the derivative of this is just 0. So, and then we're looking at the second component, so the derivative of y to the 3 over 2. Same idea, we have the constant in the front, so we'll keep that. And we'll take the 3 over 2 in the exponent and multiply out in the beginning. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent and we write out 1 to the half. And then we just evaluate and we'll end up with 1 to the half. So we've so this is the correct partial derivative. So now all we're going to do is substitute into this master equation. So we'll substitute that into this. So I'll clear the page. So it's still number 1. And we'll have s is equal to, so from 0 to 1 and 0 to 1, which is obtained over here. So if they're giving you different limits, maybe they have a 2, then you'd write 0 to 2 and 0 to 1. But here we have 0 to 1 for both. Integral from 0 to 1. And then you have the square root of 1 plus x power of a half squared plus y to the power of a half squared and then dy dx. All right now we're just going to evaluate through so we'll have double integral and we'll end up with 1 plus x so we have here we have 2 times 1 half will just give us 1, so this cancels out and we end up with just x and then plus y, similarly for y. So you can see over here, a half times 2, and that will give us the y, and then we have dy dx. And now we're just going to evaluate it um, just like as a regular integral. So here we can see that um, the junior tutor used dy, so we evaluate it, the integral with respect to y first, so we can do that. Um, but it doesn't, the order doesn't really matter, but we'll, we'll do it this way. Uh, if you do it with first with dx or dy, um, it'll be the same answer. So here we have 0, 1, and then the integral of the square root of 1 plus x plus y. So we know this is also equivalent to, let me just erase this here. So this is also equivalent to all of this to the power of a half. Okay, so we'll do the same process. So we multiply, um, well, we'll do the opposite process here. So we we add one to the exponent. So we know we'll get one plus x plus y to the power of three over two. And then we need to think about the constant that we put in front. So such that if we did the derivative, um, we would end up with no, we'd get we'd end up with a one, and that would be two over three. So two over three times three over two is just one. So that's kind of how we figured out the integral because we have a one up here. So there's nothing up here. So if we did the derivative of this, we'd end up with this. Um, and then we have to take the um, integral of, I guess the the inside component. Or sorry, no. This is this is the correct integral. So that's all, that's all you have to do for the integral here, because there's only uh, one variable. So we have just the y, and it's the exponent of one. So for this integral, that's all you have to do here. There's no further. So if, if there was a more complex function on the inside of the brackets, then you might have to do a more complex integral. But for this one, you just evaluate it as such, and we end up with this. Um, Evaluate it at y equals to 0 and y equals to 1, and then we have the dx. So we'll do that first, so we'll evaluate it. So we have the integral of 0 to 1, and then we can take out the 2 thirds and put it in the front. So we'll erase that. So we have equals 2 thirds. So we can do that with just constants, and then we have for the first component, so when we substitute y equals to 1, we'll end up with 1 plus, so we'll put this in brackets, plus x plus 1. And this is 3 over 2. And then minus 
1 plus x plus 0, 3 over 2, and then this is dx, and we'll go one more step, 2 over 3, the integral from 0 to 1, and we end up with 1, oh sorry, 2, let me just redo that, we end up with x plus 2, 3 over 2, minus 1 plus x, 3 over 2, dx. Okay, so we verified up to this step, so we get the same solution here, so we get the same. Now we have to take the integral with respect to x, so I'll clear some space up top. Okay. Okay, so, so we have equals 2 over 3. So if we're going to take the integral of this, so we do the same process, so we'll do two kind of separate, these, these can be separated out and can be done separately. So for the first component, the integral of this with respect to x, we would end up with, in brackets, we have 2 over 5, x plus 2, 5 over 2. So same idea here. So we add 1 for the exponent, and we'll get 5 over 2. And then since we have just the 1 over here, or nothing essentially, we need to think about what can we multiply 5 over 2 to get 1. So we put 2 over 5. So if we were to take the derivative of this, this would come out to the front. So we multiply this out, and then we're left with 3 over 2 and then one, one constant in the beginning. And similarly for the second component, so we have minus 2 over 5, 1 plus x to the power of 5 over 2, square bracket evaluated at x equals to 0, sorry, so 0, and one. Okay. Okay, so we can take the two over five and factor it out to the front. So we can take two over five for both components. So we have two times two on top and then three times five on the bottom. So we'll have four over fifteen. And then on the inside, we only really have to evaluate for this because we factored out two over five. So the first part will substitute one in. And we'll end up for the first component of this integral, we'll have 3 to the power of 5 over 2 minus 1 to the power of 5 over 2. So let me just explain that quickly. So the first component, we substitute 1. We'll end up 1 plus 2 equals 3, and it's 5 to the 2. We already factored the 2 over 5 out, so we don't have to worry about that and then minus 1 plus 1. So actually this is supposed to be a 2. So 1 plus 1, 2 to the power of 5 over 2. We don't worry about this because it's already factored out. And then we evaluate for x equals to 0. So this was for x equals to 1. Now we evaluate for x equals to 0. So we'll say minus, so 2 to the 5 over 2, minus 1 to the 5 over 2. This is all in brackets. So here, we substitute 0 here, we'll get 2 to the 5 over 2. We don't have to worry about this, we've already factored it out. And then minus 2 over 5, we've already factored this out, 1 plus 0 to the 5 over 2. So we get 1 to the 5 over 2. Now we just calculate and simplify. So let me erase the bottom of the screen, so let me erase this on the bottom. Okay. So we'll end up with 4 over 15 in the front, in brackets. So we have the 3. Can't really do much with that. We can just leave it as it is. 3 to the 5 over 2. And then we have negative 2 to the 5 over 2. And then minus 2 to the 5 over 2. So this would be 
two times this. So we would have two. So as we um, minus two times two to the five over two. And then we're left with plus. So negative minus minus a negative will be just a positive, and then we just have one five over two. So we know for here, the actual exponent here is just one. So when we're multiplying like these in, in this format, so if we have a to the power of something times a to the power of something, we would just add the exponents. So here we would have two, seven over two. And the rest will stay the same. So I'm just writing out the rest that we already figured out. So we're left with this. So this would be the final answer. Um, so looking at this, so another thing that you can simplify here is one to the power of anything is just one. So we can actually erase this exponent because we know anything to the power, one to the power of anything is just equal to one. And we can calculate this with our calculator or we can leave this as our final answer, but we'll double check that this is correct. So let's just plug this in. So we have 4 divided by 15 times 3 to the power of 5 divided by 2 minus 2 to the power of 7 divided by 2 plus 1. And we end up with, so this is equal to, let me erase some stuff up here. Okay, so this will end up equal to 1.407. So the answer is correct here. So we'll write a comment here. So great work, correct answer. And we'll mark this as correct.